Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how you can create the spawn system for a race. So you drive to this point here, press enter, he loads the track, he has a countdown and then you can do the race. So let's go. The first thing I want to change is how we actually start the race. For this let's make a blueprint actor, call this race, open this up and it should have this effect here, just for example, make this a little bit bigger and then we add up a box collision like that. Great. So we need some functionality around here. What we can do is we go back to our start blueprint here and just take this functionality and place it right here. So what I want to do is I want to change the way how we trigger this race. So let's remove the begin overlap event here and let's add up on the project settings input a new input. This is the interact input. Let's put this on the enter. For this, I want to create right click blueprints, blueprint interface. So we have an interact underscore interface. Open this up as well. And this will be our interact function. And it gets one input, just our car. In my case, it's the Firebird. Then we can go to our Firebird. So our parent car, in my case, it is the Firebird. And we need some variables here. So the first one is the input, just a boolean. Make sure that the default value is true. And we place this right here to decide when we have an input and when we have not an input. So input means true as well for the throttle input right here. Great. So the second thing I want to change is I want to create a custom event that called spawn so that we are able to spawn whenever you want. And I want to change the function a little bit. So we uncheck this here, say a split structure pin as well here. And we want to just connect the location and the rotation. It's not necessary to connect the scale. So now we call our interact action event, say get overlapping actors, select the actor, get a for each loop with break. Then we say does implement interface, select our interact interface, need a branch to ask. And then we go from the array element and say interact message. The true case. And then we go back to the break, get a reference to self and connect it as our car. So Compile and save this. So we change the input here, change a little bit the respawn function and create the interact function here. So we can close this, go back to our race blueprint. And now we want to interact with this object here. So we go to the class settings and add the interact interface that we created. Compile and save this. And now we are able to call the event interact and connect it. So the first thing on this function is I want to optimize the timer here so we can remove this one here, open up our racing widget here, go to the graph again. So we have our get finish function and our timer function here. And what I want to do is I go to the event graph and I want to add a custom event that called start timer. The start timer gets a function called set timer by function name. We call the function name timer, 
put this to 0.1 seconds and we want to check the looping to true. Then another custom event called stop timer, go from the return value and say clear. And then we connect the stop timer with the clear event. Great. So this is our new timer here. The another thing is I want to net another custom event. This is our countdown. So the countdown is pretty simple. We take out our message text here. Want to set the visibility of course to visible. And then we want to set the text to three. Have a little delay here of, of course, one second. And then we can just copy and paste this part. So three, then two, then one, and then go. And the last part is of course to call our start timer function. And then we go again from the message at the end and want to set the visibility to hidden again. Then we just have to connect the message with the target boxes here, like this, compile and save this. And now we open up our get finish because we want to call the stop timer function when we cross the finish line. Great. So we can close this as well. So let's continue with our event interact of the race blueprint. After the add to viewport, call our countdown function. Since we now optimized our functions, the next part is to make the whole track invisible. For this, we open our start blueprint again, where we have our start gate here. I add up some start positions here. So that's just fears that I make invisible. So pretty easy, just select everything here. And I have the collision to nothing. So no collision and the visibility is false. This is for later. And we need another variable here that's called open world. Make this public here. And what I want to do is I open the construction script, take out the open world boolean here, need a branch. And then I take out the gate and the trigger. And the idea is we want to make the gate invisible when the open world is true. And when it's open world is false, we make it visible like this. And for the trigger, we want to set the generate overlap events. So this is the collision box to false and in this case down here to true, like this. Of course, we have to do this as well for the checkpoints. I already did that, so it looks exactly the same. So add up the variable open world, make it public, set the visibility for the visible parts and for the box collision, we make the generate overlap events true or false. As well for the finish line, same thing, the open world variable, public, and exactly the same concept. So the good part about this is we can now open the details, select every checkpoint and go from the open world to true. As well for the finish and the start. So now the whole track is invisible. Of course, we want to make the whole track visible when we start the race. So let's take out our race blueprint right here, put it right here. And we go to the race and we have to add up some variables. First one is the start. This is um, start object reference. Same thing is the checkpoints. This is a checkpoint object reference, but in this case it's an array. And the third one is of course the 
Finish, Ascent, Finish, Object Reference, Ascent, Single, Variable. Make all of these public. And when we now compile and save this, go to the world here, open up the details. We just have to select the start, checkpoints and finish like that. So we have four checkpoints and we all enter them inside this here. Great. So now let's go back to our race blueprint here and want to create a new function that called change visible. The change visible function gets one input. This will be the visible. So we take out our start and the finish. And now we want to make everything visible again. So we say set visibility for the gate like that. Connect the visible with the new visibility as well for the finish line. Can just connect it again with the target here. For the triggers, so the box collision is different. So we want to set the generate overlap events in this case to true again, like this one. Again, for this trigger down here, like that. And now we do the same thing for the checkpoints. So get the checkpoints. In this case, you want a for each loop. Get the array element. Want to set the visibility as well for the smoke and all things that we have to make visible again. Great. So that's it here. We can close this. And now we have to change up our interact function again because this will start our race. So let's pull this out a little bit here. The first thing is we want to set the input to false because we shouldn't able to control the car when the countdown is running. Then we call our change visible function to make everything visible. Connect it with the widget here. So the widget will be added to the viewport. Pull this out here again. Then we go from the car, want to set the spawn position like this. Take out our start here, get world transform of the race position one and just connect the spawn position with the return value. Of course, we go over again from the car and want to call our spawn function like that. Then we want to call our countdown. Then we take out these effect here. So this one and set the visibility to false. Then we want a little delay of three seconds. This is our countdown. And at the end, we go again from the car and want to set the input back to true. Great. Compile and save this. Let's see if this works. We hit play, drive to this point here, press enter. The countdown is running. The whole racetrack is spawned and we can now do the race. So one thing left. Of course, we have to do this for the finish line. So open up the finish line again. Add a new variable called race. This will be a reference to the race object reference. Make this public. Go to the world again, open the details. Go to the finish here and select our race. Go to the finish again. Then we just pull out the race here and call our change visible function. But at this time we want to make this hidden again. Compile and save this and we now again hit play. Go to this point here, press enter, start the race. And when we now cross the finish line like this, the track disappears, the timer stops. 
So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, if you have any questions please let me know and yeah, goodbye.